Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. And today we're in Pasadena, California for DesignerCon. Uh, it's our first time at this convention. Frank, what is DesignerCon about? I had no idea what to expect out of this, and it's pretty much like all the artist alleys from all the conventions rolled into one. In a one giant room. Uh, it's our first time here, and I know you guys probably haven't been, so let's just walk through the convention and give you guys a walking tour of DesignerCon. All right, so let's uh, walk into DesignerCon in Pasadena, California. Frank, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good. It was pretty cool that they brought a little uh, DeLorean out front. That was neat. Yeah, when you think DesignerCon, it's it's kind of like it's abstract because there's so many people who are designers of things. And it turns out it's more like a, a toy and custom art convention, basically. Culture. Culture convention. Uh, it, like part Comic Con, Park Monster Palooza, and like we said earlier, really all the cool artist alley stuff where the artists gather and meet with their fans and sell cool stuff. Yeah, th those parts of Comic Con. Yes, that part, the Comic Con. And your friend, you actually know the guy who runs it, right? George? Yeah, George Gaspar. I used to work in the toy industry with him um, uh, when I very first moved to California. We worked for a, a toy maker named Sandy Calora, did stuff for like Mezco and stuff like that. And it was, it was just me, George, and this other guy, Carl, running the whole shop. And he's now set up a pretty great show. I mean, I've been to things that are like um, craft fairs, and this definitely has a little bit of a vibe in terms of people making and selling stuff, but so much cooler. And I believe it's George and his either wife or girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so as we walk in, this is this very first room, um, which is like a big ballroom. And immediately, we are the first thing we spotted were custom sculptures, resin kits. Yes, we're, we're drawn to it. Yeah, Glocko, Longhi, and uh, Raphael Grassetti. They both work at Sony. Awesome. Yeah, 3D guys. And people who have demonstrations of sculptures are doing right next to them, Smooth On's booth, Reynolds Advanced Materials down Support, in L.A. Supporting the whole group. Right. And so, you know, I think it's a mixture of people who are artists, whether they're sculptors, whether they're painters, they're uh, just illustrators, and also some materials people, too. Yeah. And speaking of materials, uh, something we also saw, a lot of uh, rapid fabrication technology yeah. yeah like 3d printers like that's a that's a form two right yeah, there that's a brand new form two wow and th this booth i think they were illustrating how they could prototype with the form two and then maybe uh mold and cast their products and and use it as a tool to you know turn digital drawings mm -hmm. and, and models into real uh, items but some people are there actually just printing objects yeah well some and, people are there sculpting look at him right they're sculpting the things are going to sell immediately right there yeah. and I, I love looking at things that you don't even need to get thing that's or that's fully painted Mm -hmm. like, it's really cool to see what materials they're casting in because sometimes it's opaque resin, sometimes it's you know translucent stuff and really fun to design kits. These were really cool. These were a bunch of uh, dioramas that this guy was making of toys. Oh, and like toys that you can buy, for example, at Comic-Con and then he would build out the set, the diorama set and sell it as a whole package. Yeah, so cool. Really, really neat. I mean, it's stuff that like, you want to do as a kid or even as an adult and he's turned it into a little business. Yeah. Now, we said earlier, my, my wallet's going to go empty just walking through this place. And I told myself I would not get attracted to prints. A lot of like a lot of uh, prints you can buy, screen prints, yeah. digital prints, pieces of art. Oh, this is this is neat. Yeah. NES yeah. cartridges yeah. that are personified. Well, are those like iPhone holders? What were those? Uh, I think they're just sculptures that you oh. can just display uh, and, and, and put around on your on your table. Like the this is the kind of convention where you can find the five or ten things that really you identify with mm -hmm. and put it on your or your office desk, right? Your, I think and, we both did pretty good uh, without spending money on. I, I don't think I. I think I bought one book. Uh, bought a Rag, Ragnar book. I definitely I bought a couple of things. Yeah. Hey, there goes Figment Foundry. We interviewed them at Monster Palooza earlier this year. They're a collective of artists who work on costumes and, and sculptures. Yeah, they did like the that uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff at yes. Monster Palooza. The, the lifelike Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And um, they're, they have, you know, their day jobs are working, I think, in... Garner in, Hall. Uh, yep. Yep. In, in building amusements. Uh, and they were actually at the Gallery 1988 uh, show, the Guillermo del Toro show, oh. and they built the Crimson Peak architecture set. Oh, wow. And... There are styles that I'm drawn to, mm -hmm. but there are so many different styles here. I'm always curious about what people like, what what aesthetic they get drawn to. And even if there are things that I don't particularly get drawn to, yeah. um, everyone has, has an audience and can find an audience here. And look at this. The second room, 
that's how big this show is. Yeah, it's just, massive. Yeah, we we walked in and thought it was oh this is, this is kind of cool. It's one room, and then we realized that it went into the second room. Right. It's you got this the, the lower light side and this brightly lit side of just a, it's an eclectic eclectic mix. Like I oh, think really? teeth. I never saw that. Yeah, they're uh, I think they're uh, wool or felt teeth. Oh wow! Really cool skulls and like working lots of different materials. Like, earlier we saw people just doing cast resin. There were people working in felt working in wool, working in vinyl. Yeah, there's a, a, lot there's like of a little bit of everything. And it's it's kind of like what you were saying before, like different people are drawn to different things. Like not everything here, like it, from wall to wall is like Monster Palooza, where it's creatures and, and masks and monsters. There's so many different styles and so many different aesthetics that if you're into something, chances are you're going to find something that you're into. Yep. And uh, if you meet people on Instagram, like I know it's very popular these days to follow emerging artists or mm-hmm. established artists on Instagram, like their stuff. People do to do like one sketch a day or share one picture a day. This is the exact kind of convention where you're going to find those people in person and meet them. There and- was a few people there that I have been following on Instagram for a long time, and that was the first time I met them that day. Yeah. Um, when we first walked in, there was a guy, uh, a British guy with long hair, Dr. A, and I follow him on Instagram, and, and uh, he has his stuff here, and that's pretty cool. Really cool. Like, hundreds of booths. Now, something that we talked about um, when we were walking through the floor, also the difference between original concepts and kind of parody concepts. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of people kind of sculpting their versions of an established franchise, their st- take on a Star Wars character or a hero, a, Star- a Marvel character, or a DC Comics character versus original creations, which are maybe tougher to get out there. Yeah. And it, it's kind of an interesting um, dynamic. I, you know, I, I, I understand both sides of it, like I, to, to take something and make like, you know, a super deformed stormtrooper where he's got these, you know, funny proportions and stuff and it's cute and that's like fun to put on your desk. I, I'm a little bit more drawn to the original stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I think you were saying that it's kind of like you want to find the like one or two things that you want to put on your desk at work or on, on your shelf at home. And um, I think the original stuff kind of speaks to me a little bit more usually. There's creativity in all facets of art. And I obviously, like, definitely like seeing a take on uh, an established character. Like, you know, how can you combine Darth Vader with uh, an old rustic or steampunk look? But with the original stuff, you can also tack, uh, you can take on some established tropes, like creatures, you know, lizard creatures. Like here, I think this is Sandy Calora's booth. Yeah. And he's doing a, he launched a recent Kickstarter. He did and, a Kickstarter for those little figures that he did, and then he's got two books that he put out there. Mm-hmm. They're really cool reference books. And there's some, like, established creature tropes, you know, like mm-hmm. a mon- like werewolf trope or vampire trope or, or a lizard side trope. And mm-hmm. to see people who take, like, their, their version and their artistic interpretation of an existing trope and find something that resonates I think that's the stuff that's most exciting to me yeah and so lots of people just selling stuff um, and, and when you go to a show like this you see a wide range of prices like here toilet obviously toilet R2-D2 yeah toilet away. I wonder if that's a license thing no I don't think so I think you see I mean, they can get away with a lot of fan stuff here you know <laughs> limit, very limited release they're not going to put it online uh, one of the reasons to go to a show like this is so you can find the limited release items they're only going to make 5 or 10 or 40 of them and sell out in the first day yeah there was there was a couple of people that said that they ran out of what, what they brought in the first day and there was other people that said that they were making things that were exclusively just for this. Like mm-hmm. An artist might make, you know, one of these little doodads, and that's the this is the only run they're doing, and it's only going to be at this convention. Right. And you can tell it's not like a crowded convention either. It's not wall-to-wall, elbow-to-elbow people. I but love how... it did not feel empty. It, it was didn't. like a ghost town. It was like a very nice balance. Yeah, and here you can see a, a MakerBot replicator. People, yeah, demonstrating what they can do with 3D prints mm-hmm. and then selling those prints directly yeah. there. And it's funny. We saw met a bunch of people who actually watch our videos and learned from them. Maybe they knew had a certain skill set, but they d- took you know your molding and casting techniques and gave them inspiration, and they have a booth now. Yeah, that, it was surprising how many people had come up to us and said that that's how they got their start was watching like our week of builds like the sculpting or or something like that Uh, i also love uh collaborations and this is a booth and we did an interview uh with this guy kyle and his creation this willow creature he actually sent out some of these toys to other creators and other artists and then they put on their interpretation and added and sculpted their own version which is beautiful stuff really really cool I, i love it when you take a template 
Yeah. Like a, just a, a blank, basically. Uh, and it, it's a thing that happens in the art toy world. Yeah, like you the, send like these the, like blanks here on the back. Yeah. You see them, those white figures, and send them out. And then you can do Sculpey. You can you can put monster epoxy you know, clay epoxy clay on it, um, and you could just make it your own. Yeah, I think we need to do one of those like vinyl toy customization things in the near future. Totally, absolutely. I would love yeah. to do one of those. Uh, and then people try to be really clever too. Like we saw that R two D two, that toilet R two D two, and then there was definitely some boots here where they're taking existing figures or toys or ideas and mm. well, you said Alien vs. Predator, E.T. and Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, that's so pretty funny. funny. And oh my god, look at these uh, Android figurines, but oh, they're $70 so cool. each because Whoa. they cast a skeleton inside, inside each of- one. Wow. When you look at that, when you're walking through this show, are you also thinking about like, how did they do that? How did they cast that? Like, What material is that some people out of? are really creative with with the way that they use their materials, and that's that's one of the cool things about you know having Smooth on as a support there. Because if you're like, hey, I want to do this thing, and it's really weird, they'll have like, oh, we have this material that you could use for this part and that. Like, there's a lot of you know different weird out of the box ways you could do other than just pouring a you know a white resin inside of a rubber mold. Right, like this guy here. These are all 3D p- printed mech action figures yeah every piece he's not like you could 3d print one model and then mold it and cast it and then connect them together but because of the way he's designed it Mm -hmm. they have a 3d printed look he'll finish it and that has an appeal yeah i think it's neat i I have that's one of the guys that i was following on instagram that was the first time i met him there oh very very cool and then are you surprised when someone does uh you do an interesting technique like they'll mix the material nick bonamy right there oh with the beard yeah with the beard (laughs) he's he's worked for me a bunch of times nice yeah bumping over lots of people like uh your friends from face off were there yeah eddie from face off was there Mm -hmm. um bunch of my bunch of my buddies that have little independent toy things uh chris and Amanda, they're in. I think they're probably towards the end of this video in the far back corner. Um, they they have their own little line and a uh, bunch of people that work with me. Uh, I ran into like painters and sculptors and stuff. And you also get a sense of like what's uh, what's trendy right now for this uh, the collectibles market for the art toys. You know, desktop figurines. I saw a lot of like wall mounted uh, t- a take on um, like a, a, a wall mounted head. Oh right? yeah, like, like the the weird animal mounts. Right, crocheted heads mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Lots of cute figurines. A lot of cute lot creatures. Of fat, chubby little alien mm-hmm. monster thing. Yes, chibi, chibi creatures um, everywhere. And then, uh, oh, she's like the David Bowie uh, lightning bolts, very fashionable right now. Everybody's saw a lot got of, a lightning bolt on their face. Yep, got lots of, saw lots of uh, prints mm-hmm. uh, with that. Um, and vintage toys, too. Takes on, on vintage toys. Um, saw a lot of that, like aspiring to be like the old Kenner action figures, but using modern IP, like modern franchises, and putting them in that same packaging. Mm-hmm. Um, that was also neat. And it's also cool to see how they display it all, too. You see a lot of familiar... Oh, there goes an Ikea, you know, Detoff um, uh, case, well, shelf case. They have there's another of, uh, yeah. David Bowie, Princess Leia. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, like things you see on Pinterest or uh, or Instagram, like you see them in person and you can actually buy f- directly from the artist. Um, when you look at the r- range of prices yeah. at things here, you know, some things can cost as cheap as you know, a vinyl figure, $10, yeah, $12, dollar, $10, yeah. and all the way up to $80 small custom pieces. There was some big stuff that was like $12,000 in there, though. Right. Like when you look at that, what's a way to differentiate? Like how do you appreciate why something costs more than you think it should cost? Well, I, I have a, a, a strange advantage of disadvantage that i know how to make a lot of things like this so i always go well do do, can i make this for cheaper or can i spend the time to to make this or do i have the skill to sculpt or create this kind of a thing Mm -hmm. most of the time you know i i don't really know that i would spend the time to to make these things while just buy it but um you know the values in the art and there's so many artists in here and so many of these people like seeing all this stuff inspires me to want to go make more things so even though i walked through here and i only bought like one art book um, like all of this stuff and all this creativity inspires me to go back into my shop and, and make something. And maybe next year I'll be at, de- at you know, designer con with some things that I'll sell or you know, it's the same thing. Like when we go to dragon con, going to dragon con inspires me to go make costumes and to go, you know, it, improve my craft. So see, like there's those crocheted head wall mounts. Like mm-hmm. those are cool. I don't think I don't have the skill to make that stuff. So that would be something that I would buy. Right. Um, but I think bigger than that is the inspiration. Like, that's cool. I want to go make something neat. Yeah. And it's also like 
everything is handmade. You know, even if it's something made in a, a you know, quote unquote factory in China, yeah. someone stood there and made it and, you know, they're using processes, versions, just because, you know, I, I think vinyl is, um, some people take it as a maybe a derogatory phrase mm-hmm. in our community. Oh, it's just a vinyl toy or it's just mass produced. No. But there's design that goes into it. And, and those things are still, they're not made by a robot. There's That's my buddy Chris right there. Him and his girlfriend Amanda there. They Some of their things are made in, from a, in a factory in China, but those are all still handmade. You know, not not like a sweatshop thing, but it's it's small, limited run manufacturing. Right. And you should, I don't think you should ever pay a high price for something just because it's limited. Mm-hmm. You know, f- go pay something for something because it's a creative idea or it's a really great execution. Mm-hmm. And a lot of like going through this convention is figuring out what that great execution is to you. Like, oh, can you can you, can you appreciate oh, that's a lot of molded parts and a lot of oh, casted yeah. parts that were put together or, you know, just because something is one color doesn't mean it's cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, it's intentionally that way uh, for a certain style. Yeah. No, some of these things are like they they can get really really complicated. Like these things, all these little one color guys, like those are tricky to make, you mm-hmm. know. Um there's there's a lot of really great craftsmanship that goes into these independent toy designs. And uh the the manufacturing and the uh the design of all of it. And it's something I think is also don't feel like you can't do it yourself either. We met so many people here who said you know, they just started and last year they made their first thing and now they have a booth and they're selling stuff. Like you could always take it on and try it yourself. Mm. Very, these very things are cool. cool. Oh yeah, these Japanese robots. Yeah, I love robots. Uh, and kits. I love kits. So that's a little bit of a designer con 2015 a little walkthrough, give you a sampling of all these booths that are there. Um, and you know, just because designer con is once a year oh, in Southern California. I want, I want that want fulsome green one. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean that you can't find artists like this around the country, around the world. And so find them on Instagram. That's where I found most of these people that, that I follow that I that pop up in here. Follow these artists on on Instagram, they'll let you know when they're going to be in your area, and then make an effort. It was cheap to get to this convention, five bucks to enter, uh, and we'll be there next year. Check out more artists. Yep, thanks. Awesome, thanks for watching, and we'll have more videos from DesignerCon interviews with some of these artists on Tested in the future. Thanks for going through DesignerCon with me, Frank. Yeah, I had a ton of fun. It was it was my first time there, and it was really neat to see everything and, and meet a lot of these people. And we'll hopefully see you guys there in the future. Until then, I'm Norm. And I'm Frank. Oh, that's Norm. And we'll see you next time. Bye.